In this video, we're going to have a look at the Executive Departure Important Update. Now we're going to go over the f a few things. Firstly, I'll cover what are important updates. Then we'll talk about how you can actually receive one. Next, I'll go into why they're so important for investors. And then I'll cover how you can actually use them and more specifically how you can use this Executive Departure Update. Then I'll go over some examples of the different outcomes for this topic. And lastly, I'll cover where you can go to do some more due diligence. So for starters, what are important updates? Well, it's pretty much implied in the name, but they're a brief summary of an important development that has occurred in the underlying business or stock that it's about. So this includes things like what we're going to look at today, which is the executive departure, or it could be things like earnings reports and insider transactions and dividend changes and stuff like that. So how do you actually receive these updates? Well, thankfully, it's quite simple. All you have to do is have a stock in your watch list or your portfolio. Once you've added a stock to either one of those areas, it's automatically eligible to receive these important updates either on your dashboard or in your inbox. So why are these updates so important? Well, as you know, uh, it's important to monitor a stock that you're either in, already invested in or that you're watching and that you want to invest in. So these important updates allow you to remain up to date on the fundamentals of these businesses. And it's these topics that I was talking about before, like earnings reports and transactions and uh, dividend changes and stuff like that. So the most important part or what these what makes these really useful is that they allow you to save time during your monitoring and researching phase. So for example, if you didn't receive these updates in your inbox or in your dashboard, you would probably have to go and manually find this information yourself, be it on news articles or uh, researching the stock's uh, filings itself, like it's SEC filings, it's quarterly filings, or it's annual filings, to try and decipher this insight yourself. And then all the supporting data, you would have to go and do more digging to find out that same insight. And that could take quite a while, whereas these updates try and compile the important information together and send it to you and notify you of it straight away. So it saves, helps save a lot of time. So this executive departure update basically revolves around any executive who has left the role that they're in um, within a company or left the company. So this is an example of like uh, this here on the right is a CEO leaving the company and we'll go into it later, but I'll just cover some of the data that we talk about in this particular update. So if it's a CEO and there's been a, uh, there's been a noticeable or notable amount of earnings growth, we'll cover the earnings growth that has occurred during that CEO's tenure to kind of show how the CEO has influenced the underlying performance of the business. Uh, if it's about the CEO, obviously we'll cover their name and their tenure, like how long they've been in that role. If it's an executive, being the not CEO, not the CEO, we'll cover their name and their role as well. Uh, we'll also cover their tenure, like how many years or how long they've been in that role. Also, we'll cover their personal shareholding. And this is just to show you like how aligned that person is uh, in the business, right? Like I know they're leaving, we know they're leaving, but it's like how much uh, stock do they personally hold in their own name? And this can give us an idea of like, okay, this person was heavily invested in the stock. They had like millions of dollars worth of stock in their own name, or they didn't actually have that much. So is it like they weren't, um, you know, that aligned with shareholders while they were there? That's the kind of thing we'll cover there. Also, we'll display the number of executives who have left in the last 12 months. And the reason being is we want to kind of provide some context about, okay, is this like a systemic issue where there's been a large number of executives leaving the company? Or is this just like a personal one-off situation where the executive is leaving for, for personal reasons? Uh, we'll also cover the median management tenure. So basically how long managers typically stay there at the business. So the reason we'll do this is to see if there's a high rate of staff turnover. So if it's less anything less than two years, that's not exactly the longest period of time to be in like a management position. So less than two years is pretty quick and not ideal. Uh, above two years though is pretty good, right? Like it shows you that managers stay around for quite a while uh, or at least a while and uh, have some sort of uh, not not high turnover. So that would be preferable. And the last thing we'll cover is, again, if it's a CEO, we'll cover the total shareholder return during their tenure if it's a notable amount that is like definitely been contributed to by the CEO's um, length of time there. So let's go have a look at some examples. In this first example, we're going to talk about just an executive, uh, not the CEO, who's left the company. So general counsel has left the company. And now typically, as I mentioned, we'd include the person's name, but in these examples, we're not going to. So on the 7th of January, her tenure as general counsel ended after less than a year in the role. Okay, so how I would interpret this is, okay, this person hasn't been there long at all, but what I would want to go find out is if this general counsel actually had a role at the business beforehand to see if it was just not long in this role and some longer time in the company. Um, so for me though, just as a surface level, that tells me, okay, there's quite a quick turnover in this particular business, like management doesn't stay there too long. Uh, as of September 2021, she still personally held 30,000 uh, 30, shares worth about $10 million 
million dollars. So that's a fair bit of alignment. Um, uh, that's promising and good to see. I think ten million dollars invested in the stock is good. I want to go find out how big the company is, like its market cap, and see if this is like a, a large portion. But for any individual, ten million dollars in a stock is quite a lot. So that's encouraging. A total of two executives have left over the last twelve months. Okay, so not too many people. Um, but to get some more context, I want to find out how big the management team is to see if two is a large percentage of that total management team. But on the surface, that doesn't seem like it's too many people. So that's good. The current median tenure of the management team is 1.83 years, which is considered inexperienced in the Simply Wall Street risk model. So as I mentioned, like anything less than two years is a pretty quick turnaround. Um, so it seems like the management team in this whole company don't actually stay there for too long. So there might be a high rate of staff turnover. So that's one thing I, I'm a bit concerned about. So how, where can I go to do some more digging to find out more information on this? Well. First place I would go to would be the company overview section and specifically the price history and performance chart. Here, I can go have a look and see if the company has released any announcements about the person leaving the company and maybe even made an announcement about who the replacement is uh, or if there's like an interim replacement. Um, company announcements will appear here and I could see if there's been an announcement here. Typically, they, the companies only do this if it's like a high level management, um, so this may, may, or, may or may not appear, um, but here is where I would go to have a look. And depending also on the person's tenure, it might be interesting to see how the share price or how investors in the market react um, to the news of this person leaving the company. If the person is very influential and has like a high influence on the business, uh, this may be reflected in the share price of investors saying, oh, this person was a, was a really big influence on the company. Therefore, um, they like, for example, sell the, sh still sell the stock down uh, because they don't believe the future prospects are as good without them. So that's where I'd go first. The next section I would go to is the management section. And this is just to get an idea of the uh, average tenure and just to see like what we saw before the 1.8 years and just to see the remaining management team and to see if there's already details of the person who has replaced this general counsel right like if there's already a new member in the team uh or new member in that role uh, to take their position. I'd also just have a look at uh, the tenure, like I mentioned, of those management team, management members, and just see if there's any one particular there who like bring plenty of experience to the table, uh, or if it's like generally they all do have less than uh, 1.8 years uh, experience there in the role. So the next section I'd look at is the ownership section. And this is just to see like basically ownership, uh, if there's been any buying or selling from management teams and, and large shareholders. And what I'd try and keep an eye out for is if there's any large sort of sales that coincide with these executives leaving the company, right? So like these executives, like does that mean there was any issues going on at the business where they like didn't want to hold their shares, they sold them and then they left? Uh, I'm going to try and keep an eye out for that. Uh, and also I can get an idea of the person's personal ownership section, uh, ownership holding back in the management section and see see if the other managers in the team who are the ones um, remaining have that sort of alignment of like $10 million worth or if this manager, if this member there was the only person with that kind of alignment. So let's have a look at another example. Here's an example where the CEO has left the company and now I can see here that we don't talk about the earnings growth or the TSR uh, and that's apparently because this, these those data points there weren't notable enough to make a comment on. So CEO and executive director has left the company. That's the same person, right? And the name would be there. On the 9th of January, their tenure as CEO and executive director of the company ended after 8.6 years in the role. So they've been there for quite a while. That's good to see. Uh, but I want to see how the company has performed in that period of time, right? Like if the underlying earnings in the business has grown over that period of time uh, and how the share price has performed because 8.6 years is plenty of time to have influence over a, over a company's direction. As of September 2021, they still personally held 165,000 shares worth about 163 grand. So that's actually not much ownership at all. We saw that general counsel had 10 million. This is only $163,000. So it doesn't seem like much at all, but I'm gonna, gonna, going to want to go and see what the total um, market cap of the company is to try and get more context there. A total of two executives have left over the last 12 months. Again, doesn't seem like it's anything concerning because two isn't that many of the past 12 months, uh, but I want to go see the total size of the management team to see if like two is a large percentage of that. And lastly, the current median tenure of the management team is about 3.08 years. So people tend to stay around for a while, right? Like an average of three years is pretty good. So that's that's interesting. Now let's go see where we can get some more context on it. Now, first again, I would go to the company overview. Now this is the CEO, so there is going to definitely be news about the CEO change. Uh, I can see that here, and it looks like it was announced in late 2021. So uh, the, the departure date was announced uh, a bit in advance. Um, from the share price chart though, I would wanna go have a look at the three year or five year or even max, just to see how the share price has performed over their 8.6 year tenure and see if they had like a positive influence on the business. Also in this same notice, 
notification here. I'd want to see if there's been an, a replacement announced uh, and who that person is. And then I can go down to the next section, which would be the management section, and to see more about that person, right? I click on their profile, try and get an idea of their experience and what they bring to the table, if they're internal or if they're coming from it external, uh, and get more details there. Again, I would also look at the ownership columns and just see how aligned management is because this CEO who just left only had $165,000 in the stock. I want to see if there's other manage people in the management team that have more uh, more skin in the game. The next section I would look at is the ownership and the exact same reason for the previous example, just to see if there's been any sort of insider buying or selling that kind of correlates or um, is resembling what has been occurring with the executives leaving the company. So uh, trying to see if there's been any sales from those particular executives who have left, uh, that's what I would go and do here in this ownership section. So those are two examples and these are the areas that I would go to go and do, do more due diligence. So like I mentioned, I would go to the company overview, check out the share price and see how the company has kind of, uh, or the shares have actually re reacted to this executive leaving, like if it's uh, had a big influence on it or if the shares are an, an indifferent to that person leaving. Uh, I'd also have a look at the news and see if there's any like uh, news updates about who the replacement is and more details on that. I'd have a look at the management section just to see like the management team, their tenure, how long they stay around for and their kind of ownership in the stock, how much they own. And I have a look at the ownership section just to look at like the insider buying and selling, seeing if there's any sort of correlation between that and the executives who have left the company. And lastly, I'd have a look at the past performance section. Now, specifically, if it's CEO uh, who's been there for a while, I would look at the past performance section because this would give me an indication of how well they have contributed to the company's underlying earnings, right? So for that CEO who was there for 8.6 years, I would go have a look at the past performance section and try and see how the earnings have performed over the last five years, uh, or a few years at least, and see uh, if they had any positive contribution to that. So I hope this has been helpful. This is how I would interpret the executive departures brief and where I'd go to go do some more due diligence. I hope it's been helpful. Thank you so much for watching.